need to see a consistent pattern or maybe <coughs> six, eight, ten months, a year, two years of that paid this bad dollars. They don't want to pull your credit in six months and see that you haven't done anything with your outstanding bills. That's all it's doing and that's for your benefit. And you know, they can do it in less time, but if I've been, if I've had bad credit for years, and I, even though I might be paying my necessities, but I've got something here that's been uh, spot on me for years, and I haven't done anything about it. I need to take care of it anyway. Right or wrong? Right. right. Okay. So if somebody's going to allow me to give them five dollars, like a dog messing in the road every now and again, but just do it consistently for a year or two. Then when they look at my credit, they see that I am making progress. I've stopped being a little spoiled brat, and I'm taking responsibility for whatever I've done. These were things that will get you through the program. We have to know when we go in. We have to know that if the credit is bad, your dialogue should be, my credit is bad right now. And it will help before you go fill out the application. Start working on those ten dollar payments. Some bills are even really, really small. You might have owed the phone company for a cell phone, one hundred and fifty dollars for four or five years. Got a new phone and went on about your business. <laughs> Pay them. Start paying them whatever it is. So when you go in and three or four months delay to a big picture, it's not really bad. And before I get back on credit, let me say this to what uh, the big farmers do. If you got a farming operation, if it's just you, oh my, find a name for your farm, put it in a business name. Very few people, now I didn't know that when we started out. I've got a lot of farmers, our loans are in our own individual names. Even though the farm has a name of whatever. Do it in the business name. If worse comes to worse or whatever, you go kaput. But if you do the right thing, you won't, you'll be successful. Then that's the business. It will not interfere with Omar, the man. It will not interfere with Omar and his job I've worked good all these years. Set it up as a business. Do your loan as DBA, doing business ads. If you've got a mate, Two separate, you know, put it together, or whatever. So it's not just you. And if everything goes bad or something goes wrong, <coughs> also with the credit. And when they give you a loan, they do legally. FSA is required that they can take two hundred percent collateral. They might only be loaning you fifty dollars. They want two hundred dollars worth of collateral. And that's illegal. So you have to be prepared for all of these things, but the key thing that's holding us back is credit, because nine times out of ten when you walk in the office, even if it's something you forget, it's going to come up. And then we don't have any tenacity. When they tell you, no, you can't get it, you may, I'm gone, yeah, he ain't doing nothing, but he's prejudiced, he's racist, he's stabbing that guy, and you never go back. Nose don't hurt. Nose make you stronger. Do what you need to do. And say, what if they would even give you credit in a year, but what if I wait a year or two and I'm getting all these other things in order? Because while I'm waiting on this loan and building my credit up, it does not stop me from going to NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation Service, and getting in a car share program. It doesn't stop me from looking at SARE and writing a farmer rancher grant. All these entities are separate. It doesn't stop me from producing. It doesn't stop me from starting my business and my record keeping account. So when I go back in, I can say, you know, my credit was a little better. My credit is a little better now. Plus, I've started generating me some other funds outside my job. Because it is hard to get a loan, they know on your non-farm income. Because you have other things you got to do with that non-farm income. Going to the show, going on vacation, you know, giving the kids something. And you know the kids going to need something. Your brother, something, something different is going to happen. There's a lot. You know, so 
work on it, but don't let every no means it's over. Even with NRCS, you know, I have a couple in Michigan who they were going to get a, they have a conservation plan. They were going to get a hoop house built on some of the land, their ranchers. The guy came out and told them it had to be agriculture land. Couldn't be, you know, past the crop land. Well, because they didn't know it's that like, oh, you know, you planting turnips for your cover crop. You're, you're laughing because all the folks from church is coming out there getting your turnips and you're scared the bulls gonna run over. That is a garden. That is agriculture land. So just know, just like another example is when people are trying in their conservation plan, they'll ask you, do you hear? Do you have irrigation? Oh, all the buckets of water we haul, all the water hoses I bought. Yes, I got irrigation. <laughs> what is that? I'm irrigating my plants. See, you have to think it through and you have to, wow. when they ask you a question, they've got a twofold thing. The more money you want or the bigger project you want to, you know, they're going to ask you, they're going to be your friend and skin and grin and talk to you, but they want you to say something that they can put a check mark by so they can turn you down. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the real. So you, when they ask you stuff, take your time, answer, tell the truth. You don't have to lie. But think, irrigation means what? They don't ask you, do you have a big system or the overhead or the trickle irrigation? They ask you, do you irrigate? My grandson's been irrigating since little bitty boys. They had all the milk to the plants. Produce the same tomatoes. So they ask you things, so you work on your credit and whatever program you're applying for. Even if, I'm telling you, go in those offices. And when you go in, just grab stacks. If you reach it for something on, nat on a natural conservation service uh, conservation plan, don't get one mount robes. Get four or five. Give them to the people you come in contact with. Everybody brings something out, pass it up, and read. I know Jahari and Louise didn't give you homework because my folks used to hate them up there. They'd be on it. I heard them last night talking about your homework. Let this be your homework. This is your life. You've got these visions. You've got the passions. You've got the dreams. But you've got to work at it. You've got to really do something. And I promise you, if you get serious about what you're trying to do, It'll get serious and work for you. But work on that credit when they tell you no. And another thing that they do that they don't have to do, they don't do in Iowa. When you go in the FSA office for that big money, he'll give you about 15, 16 sets of paper and a checklist. It's going to be ugly. And he's going to be asking you all these questions and he's trying not to give it to you. And then when you fill out those and you say, you're going to let give you another stack. We ask that in one of the educational sessions why you do it. They says, well, you're really not ready for all of them. You know, they say you're really not ready for all of them, you know. And they give you some unnecessary ones. Um, and the reason I know that, because with my second loan, the guy who locked me out of the other county, when the guy in my county retired, they moved him over. I told him in Washington that was going to be a bear. And it was. He denied me for a loan. Went to mediation. They denied me. Started so calling Washington. Phone, you know, guess so they was blocking my number there. Just a mess. Went up there my own dime a couple of times. But after some more tears, after being humiliated in the office, they called me there one time. Get to the office, they didn't tell me what time to meet it. Here's six suits and shirts sitting there. You know, here I am, one little farmer by myself. Now they love the Barbara that does outreach that brags, because USDA has helped a lot of farmers, and it's the best kept secret, and that is what's sustaining the small farmers, USDA. And they're good, and I give them their props for that. But the downside, some of it is not. So they love the barber that'll do stuff like this and make people participate, but they love this. But they don't like barber, that little bitty farmer that's gonna be crying and snotting and having ink beans, and I'm gonna spend my money, I'm going to watch it if you ain't right, you're going to have to make it right. You know, if the secretary is saying we got to have cultural transformation, if the secretary of ag is saying you got to be customer friendly, if the secretary is saying, you know, you got to do outreach, 
you got to do it with me. But it does draw some tears sometimes, but the end results have been better than the beginning. And this latter house is great. Trust me. And when you work in groups, it's easier. Because, see, they used to have partners meetings up there. That's all the people that were working with organizations would come together once a year and, you know, kind of talk or whatever. But when you got there, there were people that was talking to the farm service agency guy about her NRCS property because they didn't do their homework. So as individuals and as this group, for whatever you want to participate in, give it 100% of yourself. And that credit is the easiest thing for them to turn us down. In. And if I've done up credit, and if I stop paying a bill that I've, been, that I've just ignored, by two years' time, I'm going to be used to paying my bills. If I make $50 and I know 25 got to go for bills, I have learned to go on and pay them first. Don't look at no store. Don't go to the Goodwill, because that's where I'm going. Uh, and do it. You will have changed yourself. We have to be ready also. We're demanding something of them because the more you learn, the more you're going to demand. And you have to be right. You can't go in there and have pot because they've got years of messing with you. Mm -hmm. and just like now, the farm bill has changed. They're adding, they're taking away some, they're changing it around. And it's going to get worse because this is the first time in 2002 farm bill, they came up with this system they call it direct payments for all the commodity crop growers, all the big folks with the corn, wheat, soybeans. So they've been giving them free money. To farm bill, farm bill comes out every five years. Oh, seven, they want to be supposed to take it out. Commodity girls, they can't use it in free money. He ain't taking it out. So they argued they couldn't get a farm bill in 07. That's how it became the farm bill of 08. They finally made some concessions, but they didn't take that out. So the farm bill should have been in 14 to be right on the right year. But five years was up in 13. Commodity girls start kicking and scratching. He ain't giving up that money. They said get rid of food stamps. They said get rid of that 2501 that's giving people grant money to learn. Mm -hmm. Democrats that fast or whatever group's power to be. So in 2014, they finally did concede and they combined some programs. So we had a new farm bill. And it kept in food stamp program. It kept in this uh, 2501 Beginning Farmer and Ranchers program to give education to small and beginning farmers. And there's a big emphasis in there, set aside money for beginning farmers and ranchers. And they cut out the direct payments. Big farmers are living. Now, this is a Bible according to Barbara. What I see is going to happen, the direct payments that they've been getting all these years, and that county committee controls them payments, they go going for them conservation plans. They're going to want all that money out of NRCS. They want that car share money now because they've got to replace this free money that they've been getting. They're going to want these, this farm service agency money. What they do is uh, husband and wife got a business or got farm loans or whatever. You, it's in your name, you bought all this stuff you've been farming. Well, your wife would go in and you selling all your equipment. You selling it to your wife. It's going to pay off that. She got a fresh start. Same farming operation. Nothing illegal. They've been doing it for years. But because they have that credit, because they know the programs, it don't take them, but they, they know the same farmers coming in every year. Just like their operating loan. Every year they know the same farmers is coming in. They're going to give them their projection for the last year. They're going to give them their actual for the last year. They're going to give them their projections for the next year. They're going to give them their 50000 At the end of the season, they're going to pay their power back. Because they know the programs. Their credit is right. Don't let nobody tell you that the credit is not important. And once you establish it, you get it. It don't matter if my credit was zero numbers 10 years ago. And I'm an 800 now. You need it. You're going to feel better. And it's important. And then the other thing I'll say, then I'll go to questions. When you go into the office and participate in programs, once you learn 
the program guidelines and get those fact sheets and start reading them, go on the internet, then start talking to your people. But it's a need to know basis. If you're dealing with crime service agency, ask them what they need, answer what they ask you, give them what they need to know. Don't elaborate and go saying, yeah, I want to do this and I want to do that, because something you're going to say is going to be a check mark. And they're not going to tell you. If you you can tell if you say something and they start getting real excited to try to elaborate on it, boom, that's a warning saying that that's something they can hold against you. So give them what they need to know, know that program. Uh, because like when you get a loan, there's so many programs out there. When you get a loan from farm service agency, say you buy a farm or you get a farm operating loan, whatever, you just say you borrow $200. When, and so you owe them $200 plus 1% interest or 4% interest, whatever their rates are. So you got loans. Once you spend all your money, the loan officer is not going to tell you that there's a program out there called Debt for Nature Program. Say you got 10 acres, you're farming six. One acre might be the homestead, two acres might be trees. There's a Debt for Nature Program to say that if you're going to leave these trees around, in nature for 50 years, I could write off some of the loan. They're not going to tell you that. They're also not going to tell you that if I spend my little $200 and I've got a payment in five years, or if i got a payment the next year because I'm already making money, I'll go in the office and I'll say, I don't want to make this payment this year. I want to defer it to the end of my loan. Deferment doesn't mean delay. And I know I'm giving you a lot of stuff, but just go back and look for it. I promise you it's true. I want to defer it. And he's going to look at you crazy, and he's going to let you know something. But make sure if he defers it, there's a paper you sign. You're not delinquent. If my loan was up in 2016, that means my loan will now be up in 2017. And I've just deferred a payment. Usually people do it when they need it or whatever. But the difference in that, and the reason I suggest doing it, Right, before you do a debt for nature, because if I wanted to participate in the debt for nature to save my trees for 50 years, and I have a deferred a payment, they might give me $50 off. But if you have a deferred payment in your record, they give you three times as much. They'll give me $150. It's all kind of little benefits that are legal, and there are different programs that government people have thought of and set up to help a farmer. See, remember, USDA is not the enemy. They're really set up to help farmers. And what is it, 200 years old now, 150, or what? The United States Department of Agriculture, it wasn't always there. Uh, Since President Lincoln. Okay, he started it just okay. like with land grant schools. Yeah. Those are the agriculture schools in every state. Michigan State was the first one. That's why they get so much credit. But it's different things that set up because this is an agriculture country. And we've got to bring it back with the healthy food and obesity and what we're doing now. So there is so much stuff out there to help you. Not really to hurt you. We just feel offended by it because we haven't taken time to learn the program. When a man gets a car, he knows everything about it. If it make a bad tick, baby, you get not now because he got to see about it. You're going to wash it and everything. That's what you got to do with USDA. Take care of it, and it will take care of you. And learn the programs. And main thing is get that credit. And the other thing I was going to say, definitions. There's about nine different definitions of a farmer in USDA. Like with NAS, the Natural Census of Agriculture, they said just have potentials of making $1,000 a year. And you could be listed in the directory as a farmer. And what NAS does, a lot of you might not know, NAS's only job is to take count. And where people don't fill out that, and you're doing little hobby farming or gardening or whatever, that's how you get money in your county for agriculture. A lot of us think it ain't important. When the census of ad come out, if you've got $1,000 worth of greens and you give them to the church, you fill out that census. They didn't want to recognize urban farming. 
now they have to recognize the people in Detroit that's doing, you know, the little niche marketing and whatever, because that's how you get money for agriculture in your community. That's a USDA agency. So you have to fill it out. And if you're farming, the law does require and they can't use that, they can't pass that list out like the telemarketers calling you. They can't give anybody your information. That's only gathered for you. United States Department of Agriculture to put ag money in your neighborhood. So there's different definitions, and if you're going in NRCS and you're trying to participate in the program, you look at all their regs. Look at all, and they got fact sheets on all of them, or call your conservation. So when you go into a flat, you do what NRCS wants you to do. Then if you're trying to do something with rural development, you find the rules and regulations. You look at all the programs. Don't just look at what you heard and what they tell you. Because you're going for one, there might be another one that will go along with that and will help that. Okay. And read this book. Let this be your Bible for your risk. I didn't go through a lot of it. You scan it. If you read it, if anybody's took a chance to glance through it, uh, there's sections like natural life changes, family and business relations, uh, employment management. So just read this, and it's really easy. Just keep this. And if you need any, if nobody didn't get it or you need more, contact your heart. Okay, is there any questions? Open up the question and answer period. All right, let it flood. Let the floodgates start. I saw Ian here first and then Pat. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question about the 504 and 502. Um, my parents wanted to help me get involved. I don't know how far they went. Now, would that affect, if they wanted to do that, would they have to have a position in the farm or own it? And would it affect anything else they would get like their own house if they want to keep it? Would they try to build something and fix something on the farm? Would it affect them? Okay, first of all, do you remember what agency I said 502 and 504 belongs to? Um, oh, is there rule of development? Yes, rule development agency for one. Okay, rule development agency doesn't deal with the farming aspect. So no, it wouldn't deal with the farming aspect. But the rule development only deals with they said they'll allow five acres to a house. If they wanted to do something, and it also goes to one is a loan and one is a grant, it also deals with, and that's for low income. The idea is to get good, adequate housing for people because they have programs like if you've got an organization, get some literature from them because, and I'm going to get back to you, but they have a program where it takes eight families, live all up in the house. They pay for the housing, but all eight families got to build it. You know, if you get, you, get, you get yours first, it's different from Habitat. Habitat is our single housing, and that's what the community This will do eight at once, but can't nobody move until all of us get ours done. You know, it will be you build yours, and then you build yours, and y'all quit. Everybody work together. Um, rural development is the agency that what they'll do, they will put housing on agriculture land. They have programs for uh, labor houses that are free. They'll build you labor houses uh, during the season. You can't charge rent to the folks, but they're building them for them to live in. Uh, rural development has a lot of stuff, but for the 502 and 504, to answer your question, no, it's not going to deal with the farming industry. That'll be taboo almost. But if they've got, and plus you could, they'll only deal, they want you to have only one home because it's low interest. And like with that grant money, I know you can't have over 10000 in the bank. But there's so many people in rural areas that are so needy, that's really what that program is set up. Now, if your family wants to do something with the farm, then you're going to Farm Service Agency and you're going to NRCS. And you get some car shift over there. It was Pat was next. Mine is regarding a 504. I was at Rural Development and I, I was fine for that. But uh, on my property, I have barns, two barns and a big shed. And he said they wouldn't do it because that's a potential of making money. A 504 is a repair. Well, that's what I want. And that's strictly for the house if, they, if I can do something in the barn. But, um, how 
put our kid around because you have to get your real development agency. That's why I said they deal with the five acres. They're not trying to deal with the farming aspect. So uh, now, the regional director in my state, I know that if you have 20 acres or whatever, if they deal that they can legally deal with that five acre spot or three acres with your homestead. But if you, they come up there and look like, you know, you got this house and you need some repairs, but you've got all looks like it's really a ranch and, you know, and it's in a 20 or 50 acre spot, then it gets a little tricky and it depends. The best way to deal with it is ask them, well, I do need repairs. I'm not making a lot of money off my ranch or whatever, but just eliminate and do my homestead. Can I get part loans and part grants? You'll come out a lot better than yeah, part of the 502 and part of the 504. They might want to be the biggest part of the own part. Yeah. But basically, rural development is just that. It's not the farming aspect. You've got natural resource conservation to deal with that, and you've got um, farm service agency, which will give you the money to make repairs or for your farming operation. Farm service agency buys like real estate and it does farm operating loans. And so whatever it takes for your farm operating, you can get a loan from them. Two separate loans, two separate uh, interest rates, but farm service agency deals with the farming aspect of land. So I should go to farm FSA too. If you need a loan to well do it. They don't really do grants for rehab. That's where you have to kind of get creative and do other things. But see, that's where people get it mixed up and they think that if you say USDA or something, they think everything is a grant. But Most rural development, not. the 504 is a repair grant. They have the 502. It's, it's a loan. A loan. A loan. But, a loan. <coughs> but rural development deals with just that rule. It don't deal with the farming aspect. So well, I'm not did, trying to get them to deal with the farming aspect. But it's one and the same. It's one and the same. Okay. If you have over that five acres, that's what I'm saying. Rural development has a land limitation. They'll do your house and make repairs, build your new house if this is within five acres. Now, if it's part of a ranch or a farm that might be 10, 20 acres, legally and technically they don't have to because then it's considered a farm or a ranch. Well, actually, my property, is, there's two lots. See, the first lot is where my home is. Mm -hmm. The second lot is to the back. Well, that's where the ranch Okay, is. that so sounds good and technically fine, but then that means you have two things. Sometimes they will even suggest that you sell that. Uh, there was they a lady, <laughs> there was a lady <laughs> in Cobra who had an old raggedy house. Her income was only like three something a month because, you know, from the husband's job. She had a little raggedy trailer, a few houses down, that she did get two or three hundred off. It was about to fall down. She could not get the 504 loan. The guy wasn't really conducive for working with her because of this trailer. And he was telling her, when you sell the trailer, she said, I'm 70 some years old. I only get 300 a month, Social Security. If I sell that, I won't be able to eat. He wasn't compassionate. He wasn't customer friendly. That was just. No in between. He couldn't. He wouldn't suggest to her maybe a little loan, um, a little grant, only because you have this. But see, that's how those guidelines and those rules are. Best you can do is work with them and ask them, you know, what can we do creatively? Can I just use this house or then say, you know, this is another lot I own? But when you start getting the two things, they kind of lean and think you're a little more comfortable, and the program is basically set up. And see, when they said those are the things that will trick you, because when they suggest that, then you do it. They're going to go back and pull, and then they ask those questions: Have you transferred any money in three days or two years or whatever? Because see, he suggested it so he can block you. Yeah. Okay. You don't fall. See, that's what I'm saying. Know the programs and. And you know, you don't want to, you have to remember a story. The truth, it just comes natural. You know, just ask them what can you do 
or how can you know when they suggest selling, well, that's not an option. And then you just have to keep looking for other programs or something. I just programs right here. Here the USDA programs and services is right online and it goes through. But some of them can have a lot of gray areas, you know, or you can be, you know, up to the interpretation. So you need to definitely make sure you contact them if you see something that, that you're interested in. That's education okay. research. Okay, now look at that slow back to the top. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, to that top line. Okay. USDA programs and services. Yes. Who has the money? The, the agency. agency. The agency. So, we'll yes. the agency. so these are programs, and they will get you something like, and then here, conservation. Now, plus, this is, see, some stuff is tricky, yeah. because all of these are different companies. So if you just go to a USDA office and says, I want to I want to be in this conservation program. I want to know about environmental markets. Point blank and simple. Cows 